Okay, so um, in this video, there's a couple of sequences that, are, that uh, I want to talk about, um, and they're not geometric, uh, they're not arithmetic, but um, they're special sequences that we should um, be familiar with and know how to, um, uh, I guess, um, analyze them, find their sums or, or, or whatever it's asking us uh, to do. And so one of the, it's called a telescoping sequence. Um, and the way you'll know it's a telescoping sequence is if um, you have a quadratic sequence in your denominator um, and it's a constant in the top. So um, if it were, you know, like if it were just linear, like, um, like, like five over K, that wouldn't work here. Um, but if it's quadratic or higher, um, then uh, it, it's called a telescoping sequence. And what you can do is you can kind of break down these um, sequences to their partial fractions, which we just learned, uh, and look at them separately uh, as two separate sequences. And so that's exactly what I want to do. Because if you think about if you if you just took this much of it, that that could have been something that we saw last unit. So I'm going to ignore the summation for just a second here, and I'm going I'm going to say, oh, it was a over k minus two plus b over k plus three. Let's pretend that that's what the problem was to find um, its partial fractions. So we cleared the denominator by multiplying by k minus two times k plus three to each of these terms, right? And so like five would can't, like the denominator here would cancel. So we just get a five equals a times k plus three plus b times k minus two. And remember, k, k can be anything. a and b are fixed. Uh, all of them are unknown, but k could be anything. So pick a smart k. So if you let k be two, then we still have five on the left is equal to 5a plus 0. So we know a is 1. And if you let k equal negative 3, then we still have 5 uh, is equal to 0 um, plus negative 5b, or b is equal to negative 1. So now my summation, um, k equals 3 to infinity. Uh, it, instead of thinking about it as 5 over the product, I'll think of it as a 1 over k minus 2 plus b, which is negative 1, over k plus 3. Now, let's look at just this first term here for a second, when k equals 3. So when k equals 3, we get 1 over 3 minus 2, which is 1. And then when k equals 4, it's 1 over 4 minus 2, which is 2. When k equals 5, 1 over 3, right? And then 1 over 4, 1 over 5, 1 over 6. And it keeps going on and on and on forever. So that's our first group. But then we have this group that when k is equal to 3, that's negative 1 over 6. And then when k equals to 4, that's negative 1 over 7. And k equals 5, that's negative 1 over 8. And that goes on forever too. And here's a really strange thing. Because even though both sets go on forever, somehow this first set of numbers has a few more terms than this one, right? I mean, think about it. Here's one-sixth, here's negative one-sixth. There would have been a one-seventh, here's a negative one-seventh. There would have been a one-eighth, there's a negative one-eighth. So it's kind of one of those weird things that they're, they both have an infinite number of numbers, but the size of infinity is a little bit different. Uh, so this, so like, so, so, so the whole thing boils down to just the sum of the first five terms here. And that's sort of why it's called a telescoping sequence. Um, it's, it's sort of like the old school telescopes back in the day of, of, of navigation and sailors where, you know, it would fold up and fit in their pocket and they could open it up and extend and, you know, and then they, it would collapse and, and, um, you know, and, and that's the whole idea here. Like the sequence basically collapses, um, once you look at it through partial fractions. So, um, now, and again, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking that you can find a common denominator and, uh, you know, find, find you know, what that fraction is, you know, I'm okay with leaving like that, um, which is fine, you know, or some, some, some people like to get really fancy and say like, well, K equals one to five of one over K. Cause that's true too. Um, but you found the finite sum. Okay. Uh, the next one is very similar. Now, again, 
uh, it's not factored for us, but I do recognize that um, that this is quadratic and, and a constant on the top. So that should be my indicator. Um, this factors into k minus 5, k plus 2. So k minus 5, and this would be b over k plus 2. So let's think about it first by, um, by looking at its um, uh, partial fractions. So I'm going to clear the denominator by multiplying by k squared minus 3k minus 10 to both sides. Uh, both sides. So on the left, we'll just get a 7. And then this will be a times the factor k plus 2, where this will be b times the factor of k minus 5. So let's let k equal negative 2. So 7 is equal to 0 um, plus negative 7b. So that tells me b is equal to negative 1. And if we let um, k equal 5, we still get 7 is equal to basically 7a. Now, um, they're not always going to be like 1 and negative 1 like this. But um, what I wanted to say is, you know, like, I mean, like, these are picked so that they, you know, they kind of come out nicely in that in that um, fashion. Um, but, but you know, the partial fractions, like, you when you break them down, you'll get them so that um, you'll get enough terms to cancel, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and sum them up. So the summation of k equals starting at 6. And notice we had to start at 6 because we didn't want to get a 0 in our denominator. So 6 to infinity of a, which is 1, over k minus 5 plus b, which is negative 1, over k plus 2. So we just have to see enough terms. So the first one, if you let k equal 6, that's 1 minus 6 minus 5 is 1, so you get 1 over 1, and then like 1 over 2, and then 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, 1 over 6, right? I mean, it goes on forever, um, you know, but you just need to, you know, you want to see enough terms so you can see them canceling. Um, this one, like, uh, like, right, you let k equal 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, so that one starts with negative 1 over 8, negative 1 over 9, negative 1 over 10. So we get enough terms there, so we should see um, them canceling, right? Negative 1 eighth cancels with that one. Uh, negative 1 ninth cancels with that one. Negative 1 tenth will cancel with that one. So, so, so this entire sequence cancels the tail end of that sequence. And so it, we're just left with, in this case, seven terms. Um, and so then I could say, okay, um, it's equal to one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh. Or um, if you wanted to write it as like the summation k equals one to just seven of one over k, because um, you know that it's a finite sequence; it's just seven terms. So, Okay, awesome. Um, the uh, the um, next one I wanted you to see um, in this is is powers of i. Um, and uh, in fact, I think what I'll probably do is I'll save those for like maybe the next video, just just so you can have a little bit of time here to just to take a quick break. Um, but I do like those telescoping sequences a lot.